Well, boys and girls and everyone in between, the brackets are out. The 24 teams are set. We have the FCS playoffs. It is coming. It is here. And this weekend, we begin with eight first-round matchups last year. I covered the FCS playoffs. We had a lot of fun with that. This year, covering the FCS playoffs, I'm going to have a lot of fun with that. I want to go over my grievances with the bracket first, just to, and I think these are a lot of people's grievances, but these are things that I've noticed as I've been paying attention throughout the season. Yes, you haven't seen me talk about the FCS as much like I said I was going to, but I've definitely been paying attention throughout the season. Um, first things first, uh, we still need to figure out what the SWAC championship is going to be. Uh, right now, it seems like Deion Sanders and Jackson State are just going to cruise all the way to Atlanta to take on NC, um, take on NC Central. But you know, you never know. Right now, the SWAC West still needs to be decided. Prairie View and Texas Southern and Alcorn, all of those teams lost last weekend. So now. Prairie View needs Southern to lose in the Bayou Classic against Grambling or else the Jags are going to go to Jackson on the sip of the third and the Panthers will be at home. Um, like, yeah, and we'll go over this you know, in a minute when we talk about FAMU but um, SWAC is not very strong this year. You know, so it looks like you know the top two teams were from the East yet again. And really, whoever wins the SWAC West is just going to be there in Jackson. Because I, I just don't see it. I really don't. But we'll talk about the SWAC Championship next week after the SWAC West finally gets determined. Alright, let's go over my grievances with this bracket. Um, first things first, Montana. They got in. I did not think yesterday, or rather not yesterday, last weekend, I did not think after they got destroyed by Montana State, in which game day came to Bozeman, I did not think Montana should have gotten in, but they got in, they got a home game, and it's on TV. Insanity, like it's actually going to be on ESPN2, the Montana game will be on ESPN2, they do not have any good wins, I, I don't get it. They're probably in because of the money. And that's what a lot of people have said. It's probably the money that got them in. First things, um, next thing on my grievances is Montana State. They should have been the three seed. North Dakota State should have been the four. Um, Missouri Valley isn't as strong this year. And we'll talk about another team from Missouri Valley who didn't get in in a moment. Um, but. North Dakota State didn't really get any wins that were good this year. Again, we wa I watched them against Arizona, and they lost to Arizona in a game they shouldn't have lost to Arizona in. You know, that probably would have helped North Dakota State get the three seed, in my personal opinion, but they did not. And they also lost to South Dakota State. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, the regionalized matchups. Some of these don't make any sense. We might have some rematches. So, you know, there's that, and it, it kind of scares me a little bit because we're going to get some rematch. I think we might get some rematches in the second round. And again, FAMU, they won nine straight after losing to North Carolina and getting blown out by Jackson State. They also played Albany State, which I incorrectly said last year that they played um, on Twitter, and I, I got called out on it. But they played them this year and did not do very well in regards to that game because they barely won that game. And the SWAC is pretty weak again this year. Just no good wins from that conference. We all know how, you know, we all know how we cry about the group of five in the FBS. It's the same thing with conferences like the SWAC. You're not going to get any respect if you don't play the big boys. You gotta play the top three conferences in the FCS, you know, or at least, you know, a conference, you know, that can send the teams to playoffs, or at least something, 
Damn, you didn't do that. Um, they didn't do that. You know, South Carolina State, terrible this year, unfortunately. Um, Albany State's D2 program, North Carolina's F FBS program. And the SWAC did them no favors. The SWAC did them no favors because the SWAC was just absolutely terrible this year. And, you know, the SWAC kept losing non-conference games that they should have been winning. Or at least, you know, trying to win. There were some games that were very questionable on there as well. You know, like Southern. Southern scheduling, you know. Uh, what was it like Lincoln Memorial or something like that? There's that Virginia, um, not Virginia. Like it, it's that it's that one school that a lot of schools play. You know, for one reason I know it's like Virginia something, but either here or there. Fabu, uh, unfortunately, the bubble was a lot stronger or weaker depending on how how you want to flip it. And Fabu wasn't going to get in. You know, they weren't going to get in strength of schedule, you know, they get the blowout and the way things went. They even said, the committee even said, nah, this is not how this is going to work for this year. Delaware is also in, and even though they finished like six in the conference, they did beat Rhode Island, who probably should have been in, you know. But I think Delaware has the win over Navy that, you know, got them the bid to the playoffs that helped them out something that Rhode Island does not have you know again FBS losses don't really count FBS wins do carry a lot of weight and there were only like eight FCS over FBS wins this year that we talked about in the first couple weeks of the season I also didn't think UC Davis should be in I don't care if they had the tough schedule I really don't um, you win six games, you're not going to get in. You shouldn't get in. And I know there's an anomaly in here, but we'll talk about that anomaly in a moment. You know, again, they have the win against Idaho, a team in the field, but that's it. Six wins ain't going to cut it. I'm sorry. It just, it's just not going to cut it. I, I genuinely do not like that there have been in the past six win teams in the FCS playoffs. And, I've, and we've seen this over the years. You know, I've been following the playoffs for a couple of years now, and I've seen a couple of six and five teams like Western Illinois and Northern Iowa are like a couple of good examples. I just did not see it this year. I'm sorry. Austin P. Honestly, it's the whole A Sun Whack nonsense that screwed them over. They lost to Central Arkansas, whereas Eastern Kentucky did not. And yet Austin P beat Eastern Kentucky. So again, the weirdness in that, you know, along with the schedule not being as strong, basically kicked Austin P out. They probably should have been in. Um, UT Martin also probably should have been in, but because the OVC messed up, you know, with all this conference realignment and not, you know, setting things to where everybody should be playing each other. UT Martin got screwed due to a coin flip, which was the dumbest thing that you, you, you ever could have seen. Because again, I, I personally would have said, you know, SEMO should have gotten in regardless. So, I mean, I just didn't, you know, UT Martin didn't have the wins either to really, you know, say anything. Because, I mean, SEMO probably would have gotten in as an at large. At least that's what a lot of people were saying. I personally, you know, did think UTM would be in anyway. And then there's Chattanooga. Um, they lost to Western Carolina, which they shouldn't have. There's also Mercer and Youngstown State. But both of those teams didn't have any good wins either, despite them having seven wins on the year. And in Weber State, you know, they should have a seed. And they... Didn't even bid as much as North Dakota did, but we'll talk about, you know, this game in a moment. And yet, Weber State gets a home playoff game. Again, should have been seeded. Personally, I would have had them seeded. Um, but then again, you know, who would you leave out? Who would you leave out from the teams that should have been seeded? Uh, 
we don't know. We don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, it was. It's kind of. It's kind of you know a weird case of where, you know. You know somebody was gonna get angry that they were not gonna be seated. You know, because there's there's just so many teams that are undefeated against the FCS this year. You know, there's a way more than usual. So, um, I think that was a factor in Weber not getting a seed. I think personally, again, it it it's it's a fifty fifty toss up. You could have given them a seed or not. You really could have given Weber a seed. Okay. So the first round, now that we're done talking about my grievances and stuff like that, let's talk about the first round. St. Francis, who won the NEC, will take on Delaware, and they have a fun quarterback by the name of Cole Doyle, with his main target being Makai Jackson, and the defense led by Donnell Brown, and this, this red flash offense can go, you know, but they need to make stops. You know, Johnny Buchanan, Kendrick Whitehead, you know, are going to be leading Delaware on defense. Nolan Henderson, he's got to get the Blue Hens going on offense to make it really interesting. Because, again, you know, the NEC champ, St. Francis, had to fight tooth and nail to get this opportunity. You know, because Merrimack's not eligible yet. Um, and the winner of this game will go to the number one seed, South Dakota State, who, again, aside from the one of the worst FBS games, F, you know, one of the worst games involving two teams I think I've ever seen in my entire life, in which, you know, South Dakota State only scored three points against a terrible Iowa team that may be going to the Big Ten Championship, you know, and that Iowa team got two safeties in that game. And, you know, the most bizarre 7-3 scoreline you'll ever get. You know, South Dakota State dominated the FCS. And, you know, dominated the conference, the Missouri Valley, which is not as strong as it was in the past. You know, and this one is going to be intriguing to see who we get the matchup. Again, Delaware probably shouldn't be in the playoffs either, you know, but they're here. Fordham will be going to take on New Hampshire. And boy, oh boy, this Fordham team can score in bunches. Tim DeMorat, oh my goodness. What a damn good quarterback. He's got two receivers that have over a thousand yards. You know, receiving the Queese Carter being a 1,000 yard receiver. And Fotis Cocosiosis. And I hope I said that correctly. I probably did not. But he has over 1,200 yards of his own. You know. And there's also running back Trey Sneed. Who has over 1,000 yards himself rushing. So this Fordham team can score. They can put up yards in bunches. It's just a damn good team. And if we take it on New Hampshire. Who again, they have a, they have a good defense. You know with Josiah Silver and an all-purpose back in Dylan Lube and Max Brosmer leading at quarterback and North and not North New Hampshire they want to prove that their schedule wasn't a fluke because again the CAA got a little bit too big for its britches this year and New Hampshire avoided a lot of matchups with the top teams in the CAA, and that's just how it is with some of these larger conferences. You know, you could avoid somebody and not play them, and it is what it is. Um, New Hampshire, you know, again, they they have a pretty good team right here. Do we get a rematch in the second round between Fordham and Holy Cross? Do we get that? Because these two teams played in a thriller earlier in the season, and that costed Fordham the auto bid you know it's gonna be intriguing to see how this goes Gardner Webb won the Big South at six and five again an anomaly among anomalies because again there are some teams that have had that have won their conference with less than stellar records in the past in the FCS and Gardner Webb was able to win it 
you know, Bulldogs have a nice tandem, all, you know, Big South rushing leader, Nari Gaither, quarterback Bailey Fisher on offense, Ty French, William Ramey on defense, and, they, and they're going to take on the Eastern Kentucky Colonels. Parker McKinney, damn good quarterback. He's got a multi-purpose back in Braden Sloan and Matthew Jackson on defense. And EKU got the A-Sun Whack auto bid, you know, somehow. Again, I don't want to go over that because that was complete nonsense there. And whoever will, whoever's going to win this matchup will take on William and Mary. So going to be intriguing because again William and Mary won the CAA and that's a damn good William and Mary team right there again I don't I don't have to go over you know the whole Montana State Weber State North Dakota situation but in any case the winner of North Dakota and Weber State will go to number four Montana State Weber State has already played Montana State and it didn't go too well for them. But my first question is, is, because we've seen this at several points this season, and I've seen various videos at several points this season, kicking for Weber State, is that going to be a problem? We'll find out. Tommy Schuster's still here for the Fighting Hawks. You know, one of the better passers in the FCS. Tyler Hoosman in the backfield. And Devin Krasnowski on defense, and you know this one. This one's going to be interesting again. North Dakota, the third and final team from the Missouri Valley to get a bid this year, which is comically lower than usual from the Missouri Valley. And then Weaver State, they have a good quarterback, Bronson Barron. An intriguing running game, no set number one back. Abraham Williams returning kicks for touchdowns and stuff like that. And then a defense, Winston Reed, Maxwell Anderson, they are ready to bounce. Gonna be a good one. If Weber State wins, they get a rematch with Montana State. If not, North Dakota will be, you know, drumming to the second round. And then good old Simo, who won the coin flip, you know, takes on Montana. Oh boy. Again, game will be nationally televised, which is rare for the FCS in the first round. Very rare occurrence. And guess who the winner will be going to? They will be going to the defending champs, North Dakota State. Um, quarterback play is going to be a mystery in this game because both these teams have quarterbacks that are, you know, kind of banged up Lucas Johnson on the Grizz's side you know Bobby Hawk has to get this Montana team together you know a really good defense Robbie Hawk you know his son Patrick O'Connell they lead the way for the Grizz and on the other side for the Red Hawks Geno Hess is gonna have to run and carry the load with Bryce Norman, Lawrence Johnson on the defense. Really fun defense that can put up a lot of statistics. And then Idaho, Southeast Louisiana. Again, one of the weird regionalized matchups, which really doesn't make any sense. Along with SEMO, Montana. Doesn't really make any sense, but it's, it's a matchup. And Giovanni McCoy, he'll be back for Idaho in this game, it seems. And congrats to Idaho. They're back in the FCS playoffs for the first time since dropping down. And Hayden Hatton's a 1,000-yard receiver. Running game, really good running game. Anthony Woods, Roshan Johnson, and a, a really, a really good linebacker by the name of Favai Favade. You know, and I probably said that name wrong, but it isn't, you know, it's, his name's like, it's, you know, say his name once, and then you gotta say it again. So, you know, it is what it is. Meanwhile, the Lions have a dual quarterback setup. Eli Sawyer and Cephas Johnson III will lead the way, and they can help put up points with Gage Larvidane 
and also a really good defense that's finally getting healthy, you know, led by Dante Daniels. You know, we're going to have a lot of points in this one, I think. I think this one's going to be really intriguing to see, you know, because, again, there's points in bunches here. Elon and Furman hit a matchup that's really, really intriguing. The winner will go to Incarnate Word, and, oh, boy. We'll be talking about Incarnate Words quarterback next week. Oh my goodness, that man right there. But, but that's not here. That's not here. You know, we're talking about the Phoenix's quarterback Matthew McKay and the Paladins' quarterback Tyler Huff. Insanely good talent on both sides of the football. You know, the Phoenix Jalen Hampton is at running back. Oh, definitely a workhorse. Marcus Hillman on the defense, and for the Paladins, you got to watch out for the tight end. Ryan Miller and Braden Gilby on the linebacker side of the defense for the Paladins. It's going to be, again, this one's going to be fun because there's a lot of talent on both sides of the ball for both these teams. And whoever's going to draw the matchup against Incarnate Word is going to have a good one. And then last but not least, Davidson and Richmond. One of these teams will go to face Sacramento State. Now, the Pioneer Football League actually has a champion that can't go to the playoffs and their name is that that same D3 team that moved up St. Thomas, the Tommies you know but again St. Thomas can't play in the FCS playoffs yet so Davidson with their triple option offense Dylan Sparks, Coy Williams a damn good you know the number one rushing attack behind the spread option, the triple option, whatever you want to call it. Uh, going to be a tough out. Definitely a tough out. Tristan Wheeler, he's going to have to help out on the run defense for the Spiders, which is really good. And then Reese Udinski and his connection with a trio of wide receivers. You know, Jacob Harris is definitely one of them, but he's got a trio of wide receivers. That can help out. You know, again, the winner will get the undefeated Sacramento State Hornets. And again, you know, it's an intriguing playoffs, you know, once again in the FCS this year. Definitely more flawed than it was last year. Again, there were some teams last year I felt didn't get in that should have. But this year is a little bit more egregious with the Delaware and Montana additions. Again, I just don't see it for either of those two teams. I would have put, uh, I probably would have put in Chattanooga, Austin P. I'm just saying, no, I wouldn't have put in FAMU. No, I'm sorry. Yes, I may be black, but FAMU does not deserve a playoff spot. I'm sorry. No good wins for them. Like, like their best win just lost again today in um, Alabama State, I think. Yeah, Alabama State lost to UAPB in the Turkey Day Classic. And keep in mind, I'm recording this at 11:30 at night, so it's you know midnight on the East Coast. So you know it is what it is. But a lot of FCS fans are not on the East Coast. A lot of y'all are in the Midwest and the West. So this is optimal viewing for you. In any case. I think we're going to have an interesting one. I do not think that North Dakota State will win this playoff bracket. But, you know, as time, you know, goes on, I don't know who's going to come out. You know, um, Montana State got the, uh, you know, the more intriguing draw. I'll say it that way because it's a hard, hard bracket for them really hard side of the bracket for them some of the other teams do not get the same luxury you know and again we might see some surprises come out of both sides of the bracket you never know um, you know there's questions you know like can South Dakota State finally do it can they finally win an FCS championship because they were denied in the spring season and they've been denied a couple other times as well you know last year being a great example which they got steamrolled 
but we'll find out. We'll find out. Personally, don't think, but watch me be wrong. And you know, North Dakota State wins like their tenth championship in twelve years or something like that. I hope I'm. I hope I'm not wrong because I really don't want to see North Dakota State win this title. But again, there's a lot of good teams as far as the seeded teams go, and there's a lot of good teams as far as the unseeded teams go. We're gonna have a good bracket this year, I think. We're gonna have a good one. So. I want to thank you all so much, and we'll come on back, you know, um, a little, I don't know how, we'll, you, you, no, it, it'll be like like right after, maybe in the morning, you know, it depends on how things go, but catch me back here on Sunday to talk the first round, because again, it's going to go into the midnight and we, we already got to go over the FBS, you know, how the conference championships and the playoff picture are shaping up over in the upper tier of Division One. So we'll talk about the lower tier of Division One football also on Sunday. Time to be determined. Until then, Big Boy Sports signing out, and I will see you throughout the rest of the FCS playoffs. Take care, everybody. And have a good Black Friday.